We learned about bean post processors in our previous tutorial. We learned how it's an extension point for the Spring framework and how we can configure the framework for your specific needs using the bean post processor. Today we're going to talk about one more extension point which is the bean factory post processor. Again, this is a feature provided by Spring. If you want to execute code when the bean factory itself is being initialized, then you can use bean factory post processors. You can write your own bean factory post processors and you can also use some of those uh, bean factory post processors that come out of the box with Spring. So let's first uh, try and write a bean factory post processor and then we'll also see one of the uh, out of the box objects that Spring provides. Now in order to uh, customize a bean factory post processor, just like a bean post processor. See here what we did was we implemented the bean post processor and uh, we wrote these methods. We had to override, we had to implement these methods. And then the second step that we had to do was in the spring XML, we had to just declare the bean. So these are the two steps that are required for the bean factory post processor as well. We have to write a class which uh, implements the bean factory post processor and then implement the method and then also declare that class in the spring XML. So first let me switch off this uh, bean post processor that we have written earlier. Uh, all it takes is to remove this declaration in the spring XML. So in order for a bean post processor to work, the bean has to be declared in the spring XML. If not, then even though you have a class which implements the bean post processor, it's not going to get implemented, it's not going to get called when the beans are being initialized. So if I save this and uh, if we run this class again, you'll notice that the bean post processor is not in action. So now let's close this and we'll write a bean factory post processor. I'll create a new class. I'll say my bean factory pp for post processor and uh, finish. Now again, I will have to implement bean factory post processor. Now the first thing I need to do is import it from beans factory config. Now once I import it, it'll ask me to implement the unimplemented method. So there's going to be just one unimplemented method here, which is the post process bean factory. Now this is a method that Spring is going to run when the bean factory itself is being initialized, before the bean factory itself is being initialized. And uh, what argument we get is the bean factory itself. So let me call this the bean factory and um, here I'm not going to use the bean factory. I'm just going to print a message so that we know that this is getting executed. So I'll just print a system dot out dot print ln. Okay. And of course, the second thing that we need to do is to declare this class in the Spring XML. So I'm going to write a new bean tag. close it and that's all it takes. So again, what I've done is I've created a new class which implements the bean factory post processor and then I have to implement this method if I'm implementing this class and uh, in this method I've just written a print statement. Now what Spring is going to do is it's going to call uh, this method of all the classes that's declared in the Spring XML which implements the Spring factory post processor. So I have to declare this in the Spring XML. 
I have done that here. So when the bean factory itself is being initialized, then this method of this class is being called. Now you might ask, we are not using a bean factory here. We are using an application context. It is still fine. It's still going to call because the application context, as I've told you, is actually a bean factory. You are using a get bean of the application context, and you are acting. I mean, the the application context is acting like a bean factory. And uh, remember, an application context is actually a bean factory underneath plus additional functionality. So that's why this is going to get called, even whether you're implementing a bean factory here or an application context here. So now let's run this. Well, here you see the message is printed over here. And then you can see there are some log messages over here that should give you an idea. Here it says, pre-instantiate singletons. So I've told you, when Spring initializes the bean factory, the first thing it does is initializes all the singleton beans. So what's happening here is the bean factory post processor is first coiled, and then the bean factory is initialized, and then all the singletons are initialized. So this is the order in which the execution goes. And then here you have all the beans that are uh, initialized over here, and then of course the actual execution of the program. So this is a handy way in which we can plug in some extra functionality if you want to override some of the default behavior when the bean factory is initialized. One example of a bean factory post processor is something that comes out of the box. It's called property placeholder configurer. And uh, the property placeholder configurer is an out of the box bean factory post processor that Spring provides. And uh, what it helps us do is, if you want to have some kind of a placeholder for this uh, configuration, see, I have my beans over here and I have defined all the values over here. Now, let's say I want to have a placeholder for, uh, for this bean. See, I'm going to take an example. See, I have this point and I have initialized the value as 0, 0. Now let's say I don't want to specify the values over here. I want to specify the values in a property file, which I'm going to add. And then the property file will contain the actual values. And I'm going to put placeholders here, which refers to the actual property in that property file. Now let me create a property file here. Let's say new file. I will call this points config dot properties. This can be this can be any name. I'm just giving a an arbitrary name here. Okay. Now let me go to the source view here. And uh, let's say I call this point a dot point x equals zero and point a dot point y equals zero. Okay, so these are the values of my x and y that I need this bean to be initialized as. But here's the thing, I want the values to be in this property file. I don't want the values to be inside the XML file of Spring itself. I want to externalize these values. And of course, I'm just taking this one particular bean as an example, you can take as many values as you want. So you want to keep all these values outside the spring XML, you don't want hard coded values to be there in the XML, you could keep all these properties over here, you know, define the values over here. And then here, what you do is, in the spring XML, instead of actually having the value, we add a placeholder for these properties. So my spring XML is going to be point a dot point x. And then this one is going to be point a dot point y. So note the syntax for the placeholders here, it's dollar, and then you have this curly brace, and you have the actual property inside the curly brace. This is actually a standard convention. Normally, you would see placeholders like this uh, in uh, some other frameworks, like Ant, for example. So this is the common syntax that uh, even this uh, bean factory post processor uses. So I have my properties defined in this properties file. Let's save this. And 
I have added the property placeholder instead of the actual value in my Spring XML. Now, in order to uh, in order to let Spring know that these values have to be substituted over here, I will have to use this out of the box bean factory pros processor that uh, Spring provides, which is called as a property placeholder configurer. So again, in order to define any bean factory post processor, all I need to do is write a simple bean tag here. I have a bean and then class equals and I give the class name. It's as simple as that. So if I was writing my own bean factory post processor, I would have to write the class and then add it here. But since I'm using the out of the box bean factory post processor, I don't have to write the class. Spring is already providing that class for me. So I just have to add the class name over here. And the class name is, of course, with the full uh, package name, it is org.springframework.beans.factory config dot property place holder configurer okay so this is actually the name of the class which is doing this okay so this class is going to look at this properties file and then it's going to look at the spring xml and then wherever you have the placeholders, it's going to look up the properties and then substitute it. So this is a bean factory post processor. So this gets executed before the bean factory gets executed. So the bean factory will not see this placeholders. The bean factory will have a completely substituted XML file ready because this guy is going to go in first and do the substitutions. But here's the thing for this place, this uh, bean factory post processor to do the substitutions, it has to know what the properties file is. It knows what the XML file is because this is the one. But uh, this is an arbitrary name that I've given. I've given a points config dot properties. Now it has to know what this property file name is. So in order to do that, I will configure that value. First, let me open the bean tag here so that I can write a configuration value inside it. Now I will have a property name equals locations and the value equals, I will call this the points config dot properties. Note that I'm not specifying any uh, relative path here. So it assumes that the properties file is in the same path as the XML file. So I noticed that it's not there. So let me put that in the same path as in the same location as the Spring XML. If you want it to be a different location, you can use a class path uh, relative path. So here you can have a class path colon and then you can have a relative path. So it's going to look at all the class path locations for a, you know, a file like this. So now that I have specified this, the this uh, bean factory post processor knows that this is the properties file and then this is the XML file. It's going to do the substitution and then the bean factory is ready with the substituted values. Let me remove this because I don't need this. This is my bean factory post processor. I'm not going to use that here and I've saved this file. So let's run this. Now what's going to happen is um, point A will have 0, 0, even though I have not specified the values here because the, this bean factory post processor is going to do the substitution for us. So let's run this and find out. Well, there you go. Point A is still 0, 0. And the bean factory post processor has gone ahead and done the substitution before the bean factory is initialized. As you can see here, here you have a property loader support which loads the properties and then it loads the properties from points config dot properties and then after that the bean factory loads and then it pre-instantiates the singletons. When this phase happens the properties would have already been substituted and that's how point A ends up with zero zero. So again, this is another handy feature if you want to override some of the behavior of Spring 
and you want to add your own steps in order to configure the beans or to add any extra uh, features like the property substitution, then the bean factory post processor is really handy.